look, I know that you probably don't want to hear this. You basically have figured it out that you just don't want to deal with that whole idea of Christianity and all those rules and regulations that you think you got to do in order to get saved. I understand that. You know, I kind of figured that you're probably like most people and long about now you want to cozy up to a good football game, have a six pack, sit down, you know, and enjoy the game. You know, you want to paint up your face and go see a football, baseball game, you know, or soccer. Oh, we don't do soccer, do we? It's not a man's game. But I understand that. You know, you probably don't want to hear about Jesus and the end of the world. Quite frankly, you don't want to hear this salvation message. You just want to have your cake and eat it too, you know. Okay, maybe you don't want to have your cake and eat it too. Let's be real. What you want to do is you want to have your gun. You want to go out. It's probably getting close to deer and elk season. Take your bow and go drop something. You know, kill it. Eat it. You know, take care of it. Do a manly thing. After all, isn't that what men do? Well, do it. Yeah. Go out and kill something. Go, go shoot it. Skin it. Gut it. Dress it out. Take it home. Pack it up. Get meat in your freezer. Share it with your friends. Go fishing. Do those things that you enjoy. Might as well. That's what you want to do. You see, God has wants too. And He doesn't want you to go to hell. That's your choice. He said that you could take me with you hunting. You could take me with you fishing. You could take me with those things that you like to do if you want to. But if you don't want to, fine. I'll stay out of your life and I won't be involved in your life. Matter of fact, I'll tell you what you can do. God's saying it to you. You can go to hell because that's where you'll go. You see, it's not about you sitting down and saying, hey, you know what? I don't want to go to church because I personally, Sunday mornings, I like to kick back and watch my football games. It's not what being involved with God is all about. And that's not what salvation is. It's not what a relationship with God is. You see, there are people out there that can drink six packs on weekends and enjoy themselves. As long as they don't run somebody over in a car. Hey, you know what? All things are lawful to a Christian. In other words, all things Christians can do because God forgives them. But not all things do they want to do. Now, I'll admit, I've had beer. Sometimes I like a beer. I'll sit down and have a cold beer. Now, I don't have six packs because, frankly, I don't like the taste of beer. But I have had six packs of like this gelata kind of thing. You know, it's kind of like a like a beer, you know, and it's got, you know, like tomato juice in it and stuff, you know. And I sat down and drank it, you know, and it was a hot day, so I drank another one, you know, and I think I drank maybe, maybe, maybe if they were little small ones, you know, like 12 ounces, I guess I drank a six pack, you know, but I was at home and I enjoyed it with me and my God. You see, Jesus wasn't opposed to people having the things that they think they want while they want them. Because until you choose to give something up, you're going to want it. So you might as well enjoy it. I did. I enjoyed the six pack of geladas, you know, and every once in a while my wife and I, you know, we have a beer or we'll have a glass of wine, you know, and it doesn't affect our salvation. Now, if it affected us, if we were driving, of course, if we got in the car and started driving, then that would be stupid because obviously the alcohol has an effect on my body. And so, knowing that, practically speaking, of course I don't want to drive. But you know, in Alaska, if I was the only person out there in the bush, I'd probably be driving. So, the circumstances of where I live dictated what I should do in those situations. Being out in the bush, where I was living by myself, 35 miles outside of Nome, Alaska, all the way up a little tiny, tiny gravel road in the middle of nowhere, out at a place called, uh, gosh, I can't even remember the name of it, it's the last checkpoint on the Iditarod before you get to uh, Nome. Huh, can't remember it. 
But basically, all it is is a building. You know, it's a building that you know people use in the summer. You know, to have dances and other things. You know, going on. It's kind of like a, a motel. You know, and it's kind of there. You know, it's a landmark. The winter fire up the generators. You know, keep it going so it's warm so people can visit there. And you know, they stop there for the last checkpoint before hitting the gnome. And you know, in the summer there's you know occasionally you know gold miners going by and things like that. But uh, safety. That's what it's called. Safety. And uh, I worked there. You know, I was the assistant manager. And uh, I remember living there by myself. Now, if I was drunk, which, you know, there were dances we had, and natives would get drunk or people would get drunk, they would come all the way out from Nome there, and then they would drive all the way back. And if they ran off the road, where did they go? Off the road, out into the tundra. Guess what? There's nothing there. So there was not a problem for them there in those circumstances. But you see, God is trying to prepare you for your circumstances in life. That's why he mentions about this salvation thing. He doesn't want you, you know, to like take a gun, you know, to a nuclear war. He doesn't want you to take a knife to a gunfight. He doesn't want you to go unprepared and be stupid about eternity. You know, I mean, quite frankly, when you go out shooting, don't you take a gun? I mean, you don't go take a slingshot, do you? Now, you might, you know, try it. You know, there are some pretty powerful slingshots, but I don't know. God's trying to tell you, look, own up, put up, or shut up. And that's the point of where you need to get a grip on it. It's not about this churchy thing that you may have gotten a little carried away about. It's about eternity. You see, that's what really the gospel message was about, about you dealing with God on a one-to-one. -one. You know, if you want to talk to God about why you don't want to go to church on Sunday, hey, God don't care. God wants to talk to you about what you're going to do with other things, you know, like your guns, you know, like maybe... Maybe you don't want to be shooting them so much, you know, like in a city limits, you know. Uh-uh. Or maybe you have a bad attitude and you need to adjust your attitude so that you're a better hunter than what you are. You see, there's a lot of things that affect you as a human being that you don't seem to maybe get a handle on by yourself doing your own thing. But God's got a handle on it because just like you needed to learn how to shoot a gun, you need to learn how to live your life. Okay, maybe not in this life. Maybe you think you've got it all together. But you need to learn to live your life in eternity. Because you don't have a handle on how to live your life in eternity. You need to learn that. And somewhere, somehow, you need to figure that one out. You need to figure out that, you know, it's open season on you. And that there's someone out there hunting you down to distract you and keep you from learning how to live your life in eternity. Because you aren't the hunter. You are the hunted. <laughs> you didn't know that, did you? Matter of fact, it's buck season and you're the buck. Yep. There are things and people and places and all kinds of distractions that are taking pot shots at you and you don't even have a clue what's going on. And that's the reason why sometimes, you know, I like to put this gospel, you know, this salvation message down to a real level, you know, so you as a hunter, you know, you can figure it out. You know, you can say, well, you know what? Maybe I won't go in the woods if it's open season on me. You know, and I've seen it like, you know, opening deer season. You, you've been there, you know. You get like 12 guys, you know, and you get all liquored up, you know, and you get all, you know, hunted up, you know, and you get your camouflage on, you know, and you get your, your gun on, you know, and you get out there and the, you know, it's going to be dawn, you know, just, just a few hours before dawn. You're out there sitting, you know, and getting ready to shoot at, you know, the first thing that walks along. You know, and sure enough, it's buck season. And, man, you hear all of a sudden it's like machine gun fire going off. All these people, you know, whacking and shooting at everything that moves because they got buck fever. You don't want to be out there during buck fever, do you? And that's kind of what's going on in the world right now. It's kind of like buck fever. You know, there's all this wacko stuff going on, you know, and people are shooting at everything that moves. Well, you need to figure that one out for eternity because, quite frankly, if you're not prepared for eternity, then guess what? You're going to hell. That's right. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean that you had to have given up, you know, your six-pack of beer or going hunting or, you know, watching TV on Sunday. Matter of fact, you probably don't have to give those things up. 
might have to just kind of like, you know, listen to and figure out a little bit about, you know, some of what God was saying in the first place, you know, about his son and about salvation. You know, kind of like, how can I avoid going to hell while still not wanting to necessarily, you know, sit around on clouds in heaven? And that's kind of where you got to get to, you know, when it comes to your life. Because you went out, admit it, somebody showed you how to shoot a gun. Somebody taught you how to skin, how to gut an animal. Somebody taught you how to hunt, how to fish, you know, how to be a man. Or maybe you taught yourself and you learned it along the way. God, I hope not, you know, because quite frankly, I've seen some people that have tried to, you know, gut animals, you know, without <laughs> knowing how to clean them first, you know. And ever seen meat go bad? Yeah, you know you have. Stinks to I have it. So, frankly, you know, I hope someone showed you. And that's what God is trying to do when it came to Jesus. He's trying to show you something. He's trying to talk to you. He's not saying, look, do this, do that, do the other thing. He's saying, listen to me. Talk to me. Get it from my lips. Hear it from the horse's mouth. Get a handle on this. This is what I mean. This is what I say. Yeah, there's been a lot of religious talk, but I'm telling you. And that's why Jesus was sent. You see, just like, you know, Fish and Game comes out, you know, and tells you what you can and can't do. Well, you know, there are people out there that are going to tell you what you can and can't do, you know, quite frankly. But, you know, they are only enforcing the rules that someone else made. Now, if you had talked to that someone else that made the rules in the first place, guess what? You could get it from the horse's mouth and see what you can and can't do. Because sometimes, if you're like me, you know Fish and Game has to go by what they think, not necessarily what they are accurate about. Maybe the rules changed. Maybe God changed the rules. Maybe God has something for you that you'll understand in a better way than you've ever understood before about this eternity thing. Maybe you're going to get a handle on this idea that you don't got to go to hell if you really don't want to. Matter of fact, it isn't about your, you know, swigging some alcohol sometimes or chewing tobacco, you know, or even if you're one of those silly, you know, to me, it's like childish stoners that seem, thinks they got to get stoned every five minutes. That's kind of dumb. But, you know, if you're one of those too, you know, hey, God's got something for you. You know, he'll tell you, look, you know, if you want to be addicted, fine, go for it, you know. But guess what? You still got to get ready for eternity. You still got to get prepared. You got to figure out that there's more to this life than what you're just doing and just living. Because there's going to be more to life than death. And so you can enjoy it, but be ready for death. Because frankly, when you die, you're either going to go to heaven. I mean, you're going to go to a place where, you know, someday you'll go to heaven to be judged, but then you're going to come back to the earth. You know, it's a lot of story, all that religious stuff. But the point is, you're not going to die and that's it. It's over. You're going to die and you're still going to go on living in one way or another. And you already know the one way you don't want to go. So let's talk turkey. Let's get real. Let's not say, okay, you know, here's your case of beer, you know, and your your weekends, you know, going out to the tailgate party, you know, and you want to have a party hearty, you know, every weekend, you know, and you don't want to deal with God because, you know, if it was on a Monday thing, well, maybe if Monday sucked, you wanted to talk to God then. Then do it. <laughs> At least get ready for eternity, you know. Clean up your act when you have to, you know. Clean up your act for eternity. Clean up your inside because that's what God cares about. He don't care that you're taking something from the outside and drinking some beer, you know, and sitting on your couch and becoming, you know, a couch potato. He cares what's going on on the inside of you, you know, like, what are you doing about your attitude, you know? What are you doing? Are you just like, you know, chomping and stomping on everything around you? You know that's a bad attitude and you know that ain't right. You don't do that to your friends. So, guess what? God's trying to teach you something trying to tell you something a little different about life in general, about how you don't have to make everybody your enemy, but you can make a lot of people your friends. And those friends can help you when it comes time of need. Those friends can be there when, you know, you got somebody that you need to have at your back, you know, somebody that's going to back you up when you really need it. You know, kind of like when you die. You know, when you die, who's going to be there after you die? You see, there is someone who will stick closer than a brother. There is someone who will be and has your back if you want him to. And if you don't want him to, fine. Kick him out. Deal with it. Go to hell. 
You know that. You already know how to do that. Do nothing and you go there. But you see, the person who'll stick with you is Jesus, and he doesn't say that he's gonna come along and, you know, yank you out of everything that you ever did and done and gonna do. You know, he says, I'm gonna work with you. He says, We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna, you know, kinda like go hunting together. You know, we're gonna go fishing together. I'm gonna show you the kind of life you can have if you want to. If you choose to. If you really want someone who's got your back. If you really want someone who knows you better than you know you. And if you want someone who really has it down when it comes to being a master craftsman, a master hunter in the universe. You see, you're so busy working on, you know, just shooting at some of these small targets, I got something bigger for you. You know, I want you after big game hunting. You know, and if you still want to play around with this small stuff, you know, then fine, you know, go do it, you know, we'll, we'll do it together. But talk to me. Walk with me. You know, figure it out soon that I got something for you. You need to kind of like, you know, get some, some instincts, you know, that are beyond just, you know, animal instincts. You need to get some smarts on, you know. You need to do something a little more than what you've been doing because, you know, I can show you how to be better than what you are. And that's what God does, you know. He doesn't bring salvation just because He wants to ruin your life, you know, and to make you into something that you're not. Because, hey, you know, if you're drinking a six-pack or a case, you know, maybe, maybe that's good for you. I don't know. Maybe you're a smoking fool, you know, and maybe you're smoking token and just doing stupid, you know. And you enjoy being stupid. Well, be stupid. But don't go to hell over it. You see, that's the point. You don't have to go to hell because of your lifestyle. You don't have to go to hell because of some of the dumb things you do. You'll go to hell because you didn't do something about eternity. You didn't do something about giving God the opportunity to speak to you and talk to you one to one. Now like I said, don't get me wrong, I ain't telling you to not go hunting and I'm not telling you to quit fishing and I'm not telling you to quit being kind of the person you are. Because you probably you aren't going to change much, you know. Then again, God might completely change you. And you might like it. You might not. You know how it is. You know, when you need to clean up your act a little bit to go to work. Or you need to clean up your act in order to get married. Or you need to clean up your act in order to get along with your friends. You know, nobody likes you when you're stinking. You know, so they kind of tell you to take a bath once in a while. Well, once in a while in life, you kind of got to do that too. You know, and you got to take a look on what's going on on the inside and take a bath and get that cleaned up. That's kind of what salvation does. It's more like a kind of a spiritual bath that's going to teach you how to kind of become different than what you are on the inside. Now your outsides, you know, they'll slowly change probably. You know, I hope they do. You know, because I, I got to tell you, you know, looking a little crusty and rusty on the outside, you know. Might want to take a bath on the outside the same way that you need a bath on the inside. But that's what God can do. God can inspire you when you perspire and you know you're sneak, stinking with the pits, you know, and you know that your your uh, flagellations are kind of like, you know, not the most appealing part of you, you know, that you think it's funny, but everybody else thinks it stinks. And that's kind of what happens in life, you know. There may be a lot about your life that's stinking, but you don't realize that, you know, you've messed up. Or maybe you do. And maybe you finally got it together and you go, now that's the weirdest gospel message I ever heard, but that guy was talking about how I don't have to give up my, my weekends, you know. I don't have to give up this, that, and the other thing for God, you know. Well, no you don't, to put it bluntly. What you do got to do is deal with God on His his level, you know. You kind of got to ask Him to do what He can do for you that you can't do for yourself. You kind of got to, you got to say, look God, I know I'm not, you know, I, I, I'm not perfect, you know. I'm not, I'm not the best that I could be. I'm not... I'm not even really sure I want to be, you know, but this guy said that, you know, I could talk to you. And I don't know why I can't, except that he said that something about this Jesus thing, you know, and this cross and all that religious talk, you know, that if I if I ask you, you know, you would start talking to me. If you would talk to me, then maybe I could get a handle on this, you know, whole salvation thing about not going to hell and maybe maybe being something different, you know, and maybe not giving up everything that I like, but you know, maybe Maybe dealing with you on a one-to-one -one basis. That may be God if you're real, you know. Maybe if you are real like that, I could, I could deal with that kind of God. Maybe, maybe if this Jesus is real, you know, and really did all that stuff, then, then God, I wanna, 
I want you to show me, you know, don't 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 get too carried away here, God now. But just show me, you know, the way I I can be with you without having to be, you know, too religious, you know, and too messed up, you know, from what I am. You know, if you just be honest, and that's the point that God wants from you. You see, God wants you to be truthful. And I want you to be truthful. I want you to go to God, you know, and if you're a hunter or you're a fisherman, you know, or you're a football freak or you're a baseball addict, you know, or you're some kind of sports junkie, you know, go to God in a real gut check, you know, level and say, hey, you know, God, I ain't go to church, but, you know, I'll deal with you, you know, personally. And then see where it goes. You'd be surprised. There's all kinds of alternatives. There's people just like you doing the same thing. Only there's people like you that already talk to God about it. They already got it together. They already still go hunting. They still go fishing. Some of them even still drink six packs on the weekend. But you know what? They also deal with God daily on a regular basis. Now those kind of people you might find interesting. You might find them kind of like you and know where you're coming from so that they can help you so that you know where you're going. Because let's be honest, you and I, you know, this whole salvation message thing, you know, you know as well as I do, you don't want to go to hell. You have no desire really to sit around in some place, some lake of fire where you can't see anybody, you can't talk to anybody, you can't know anybody, you know, you can't even realize that there's anyone else there except you alone, recognizing that you blew it all by yourself with no one else's help but your own. And that you could have done something different, but you didn't pay attention and you didn't get ready and you weren't prepared for eternity. You weren't prepared because you thought once you died, it was over. And then you also had a bad idea about this whole thing about hell, that you thought, oh, me and my buddies, man, we're just going to chomp out, you know, with Satan and his gang, you know, we're just going to have a good old fiery furnace time. No. You see, the burning aspect is that everything that's good in your life, everything that you ever experienced of your nerves and all your sensory perceptions of your soul and everything else, all are directed by God. When you take that away, it's the absence of God that drives you to burning madness. You will feel the complete absence of everything that God is. And that means that you're continually, your spirit and soul will feel that burning sensation of the absence of God. I don't know how to describe it. Like, you know, it's kind of like, well, I don't know anything to describe it. You just don't want to be there. So, Get a better grip and a handle on what hell is. Don't go there. Quite frankly, figure out a way to get to heaven without going to hell in order to be where God wanted you to be in the first place. You know it's going to be through Jesus one way or another. So maybe you got some funny ideas and maybe some bad theology or some bad concepts, but quite frankly, talk, it, talk to God about it. Don't talk to you know everybody else you know and try to get a thousand opinions about what you can get away with. Start talking to God direct you know and I think you're going to find that God wants to talk to you directly about your salvation and He wants to save you from hell.